Julian, I wanted to ask you if I could about the offense. Um, obviously, you guys practice against them every day. And can you just reflect a little bit on um, the growth you've seen from the offense from week one, basically, to where they are now? Yeah, I think they've done a great job all year of just kind of building on what they do well. Um, you know, and it really is a tribute to guys, you know, who are good players playing well. Um, you know, seeing Saquon do his thing, seeing uh, Daniel do his thing, uh, the young guy stepping up, you know, Andrew Thomas stepping into a role of his own. It's just like guys are just taking more accountability of their play, and it's been feeding off of each other, and it's been uh, pretty contagious. And so, yeah, I mean, they've done a great job all year of just, you know, sustaining drives, uh, winning critical situations, and putting us in position to win. And then just one quick follow-up, if I may, on that. On defense, you guys are used to swapping guys out, substituting and whatnot. On offense, you know, you want some continuity, obviously, on the offensive line at certain positions. They've had to have a lot of different personnel changes due to injuries and whatnot. How challenging has that been, do you think, for them, and, and how has they responded? I think they've responded you know, pretty well. It's, it's tough, I feel like, when you have an offense that we all knew was you know, a little more – uh, complicated going into the season that had a lot of tools that it was able to use. You know, it's it's tough to just plug and play somebody um, as it is, you know, on defense uh, more so. And so, yeah, the guys that they've been bringing in have done a great job. I think a prime example is, you know, Isaiah. He's been balling. Um, he's a guy who's familiar with the system, but that kind of a smart, tough, dependable qualities that that he's been showing has been crucial for us down this stretch. Thanks, Julian. Yeah, thank you. Brian Dunleavy. Hey, Julian, how are you? Doing well, how are you? Good. Did you, did you watch the Colts game last night and uh, by yourself with any friends, whoever? Like, what did you watch it from, like, a, we play them next scouting standpoint? And then how do you look at Nick Foles? Do you look at him as a third-string quarterback or the Super Bowl MVP a couple years ago? Yeah, uh, so I watched just at home with my wife, just watched like it was a normal game. I didn't really try to overanalyze it because we have time to do that. Um, just wanted to get a feel of kind of how they were playing. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we all know what Nick Foles is capable of, and so you have to be prepared for that. You know, he's a guy who's been there, who's who's accomplished great things, and so um, he's a guy you, you can't sleep on, it's, uh, quite frankly. he's He has experience that you need to be – on your uh, A game, for sure. And then I hate to ask a third offensive question to you as a defensive player, but can you relate to the receivers a little, Julian? We know you've been through the ringer here in your career as far as starting, bench, backups, uh, every glue guy. Um, and now you're starting three guys at receiver with Richie James, Darius, and Isaiah who have certainly not had easy paths to being starters. And if we, it was supposed to be Kenny, Tony, and Shep as your three starting receivers. And here you are playing games with guys off waivers and Darius was inactive. Can you relate to them and the job that they've done hanging in it and becoming playmakers for you here? Yeah, you know, I, I can relate, obviously. Uh, I think, you know, the, the average fan uh, pays more attention to offense uh, than defense. And so, you know, they probably have it worse than I, I did because, um, you know, to be in the city to play, you know, for the Giants, it's you got to be mentally tough as well as do what you got to do on the field. And so that's the challenge that, you know, for, you know, my guy, I'll just relate it to Darius Slayton, has done a tremendous job of, you know, dealing with, you know, pressure from everyone, um, but staying true to himself and continue to work. And his play has shown, and I think he's, I mean, he's been balling this year, just and he's been consistent. Um, and so you have other guys, you know, stepping up. Like I said, Isaiah and uh, and Richie have been just dynamic all year. Um, and yeah, I, I could relate a little bit to them, but I would say they're doing an even better job because of you know what they do uh, on offense. Thanks, Julian. Tom Rock. Julian, it seems like you guys are mostly following Dable's lead here with uh, you know blocking out the ramifications of this game and focusing on the game. I, I guess how hard is that, you know, when, when you've been through all that you and Slayton and all the other guys who've been here four or five years without success have, have been through? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough for sure. I mean, none of us are uh, 
naive in the sense of we don't know what is we win if we win this game what it means. Um, and so I mean that's on the back of all our minds for sure. But you got to stay true to what we've been doing all season. And for me, it's the same my routine. Just attacking, playing with high effort, um, and giving our defense a place to stand at all times. Uh, and if I just do my job, hopefully we can get the win, and we all know what happens when, when if we do that. You guys have you obviously all want to do that and make, and make the playoffs. I would think that a guy like Xavier is really pushing for you guys to make the playoffs because that <laughs> that probably increases his chances of getting back on the field this year. Has he expressed that to you guys at all? Uh, yeah, you know, he is a guy who is very passionate about the game, uh, and I'm sure it's been killing him to not be out there with us. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, you know, him, you know, guys like who, all the guys who have been out, I think you want just, you know, another week, another 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 shot to, you know, get back at it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, Xavier, he's, he's chomping the bits, and you know, he's, he's getting ready to go for sure. Thank you. We'll take two more. Paul Schwartz. Hey, Julian. What's up, Paul? Hey, all good. Um, um, you know, you, you obviously know your head coach better than we do. Uh, the public face that he shows is very calm, cool, collected, um, sometimes a little monotone. Um, that is probably not the face he shows you most often. Um, which is the real Brian Dable, do you think? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I mean, he's monotone with y'all. I don't think he's monotone ever with us. Uh, <laughs> he's a passionate guy. He's a guy who loves competition. I think that's something that he's brought out uh, in me is, you know, that that sense of having fun, just competing against guys and whatever it is, whether it's Madden, whether it's ping pong, whether it's uh, a, a chip shot challenge, like throughout this whole year, that's that's who he is. He's a passionate guy. Who, he's a, kind of a kid at heart in terms of that competitive driving spirit he has. Um, and that's shown, I think, throughout the team, especially, like I said, with me. Um, but, yeah, I mean – <laughs> he is one way with some people, and, and he shows his heart uh, with you know the guys because he cares a lot about this team. Now the camera shows him during games, you know, getting heated at players, certainly at officials, you know, things that are going on in the game. Have you seen that side of him directed di right at you? No, I don't give people a reason to yell at me <laughs> head on like that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. you know, he has been fired up. Uh, I we just. Me, I mess with him in a way where he's not really coming at me in a, in a way like that. Um, and you see it sometimes on sideline. It's just his spirit, his uh, his fieriness showing itself, whether it's on refs, whether it's on Daniel, whether it's on you know any of these guys. And it's all it's all love. Uh, but no, I haven't had the fortune of getting that that treatment yet. So you've made no mistakes, I guess, huh? Hey, he you know, he just he looks at me. He he must have a a soft heart. He doesn't want to yell at me too much, and so I'll I'll put it to that. Yeah, thanks, Julian. Appreciate it. Last one here, Bob Brookover. Hey, Julian. What's up, Bob? Um, you, you know it's it's in front of you now. So if you guys do make the playoffs, what would that mean to you? What, and what do you think will go through your mind as, as it's happening? I mean, it'll mean the world to me. You know, I'm a competitor. I'm a guy who has been <laughs> – I've tried to be as consistent as I possibly can – uh, you know, during good times, during bad times, I think you know what to expect when it comes to me. Um, and that's been a constant for years, for the past four years. Um, but, but, you know, I've been to the playoffs in the league yet. Uh, I've achieved that goal in college. I've achieved that goal in, uh, in high school, of course. Um, and so I'm excited. I'm excited to get, have a shot. Um, this position is pretty exciting that we can control our destiny. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to mean a lot. But... I know I have to lock in on this pro the process of this week just so I can be that consistent guy I've always been for the team just as we prepare uh, for the Colts. And and just to ask you this, because we can't get Brian to even say the word playoffs. <laughs> Does he say it to you guys? Uh, I mean, like I said, he understands. Like, we're all grown men in in this building and on this team. We understand what this game means. We win and we're in. Uh you know, I think his approach has been great because he, he lays it out. Obviously, we know what we have in front of us. But don't go get outside yourself. Don't do some stupid shit, uh because of the the increased ramifications. Um, just stay true, and that's why I think he's not even mentioning it because he's just treating it like another week, um, a week that we have to really get after it. Um, we have a lot, of things, a lot of things to correct. We have a lot of things to build off of. And I think that's where that comes from. It's not of a sense of uh, – no, denying what's going to happen just out of, you know, whatever. 
but in the sense of keeping his guys locked in on just being themselves.